Alrighty, with the layout basically done with the background showing up, what we want to do now is actually add the bars that go ahead and display this information or get to that point of displaying it correctly. And you can see here, there's three different states. We can see a state where it's just neutral. This wasn't the user's answer, and it's also an incorrect answer. We can see here, we'll have a green if it was the correct answer, and it's going to be green regardless if the user answered or chose that question or that answer or not. And then finally, we'll have a red one, and that designates that the user was incorrect in their selection, and that's that. Uh, one thing we can see, we aren't in this video, this will be the subject of the next video, determining exactly what percentage of a bar this should take up. We'll do that in the next one to make sure we're actually filling up the right amount of the bar based on the number of answers for that question. So if you've watched the videos, there's one piece of information we're missing, and that's to determine which is the correct answer. And if I go back to my index.js, what we can do if we actually go back to our data, you can see each answer has a correct property on it, which we can go ahead and pass down. Only one of them is going to be true. So going back to index.js, all we're going to do for our question row is pass a new prop called is correct answer. And we'll just pass answer dot correct. So with that saved, we can go back to question row. And basically what we're going to have to do to make everything work correctly and to make sure we're not blocking this text or pushing this off or making sure our layout doesn't get messed up, we need to actually use absolute positioning on this overlay bar that we'll be rendering. So we'll start with the styles this time, switch it up a little bit from the other videos, and we're going to have three different, or rather four different styles that we're going to set up here. We're going to have answer bar, which is going to be the base style. We're going to have answer bar correct, which is the correct style. Answer bar, answer bar wrong, and then answer bar neutral. We'll go ahead and set our colors for these. That's all these answer bar neutral, wrong, and correct are going to have. All right, so we've got those. What's going to happen with our answer bar? Well, it's going to be a complete overlay of our actual answer row. So we want a lot of these styles to be the same, which means we want to have the exact same border radius, which will be 15. We're also going to set the position to absolute, like I said previously. And then by default, we're going to set the top to zero the left to zero and the bottom to zero. That means it's going to take up the entire space that it's given by its container. So it's going to go all the way up to the top, all the way down to the bottom, all the way to the left. But we don't want to do the right. We'll actually decide the width later on. So if we scroll on up, what we're going to want to do, remember this is going to be inside of our answer bar and it's absolutely positioned and we want it to be related to this. So we're going to put our answer bar inside of here. And it's just going to be a basic view. You can go ahead and use a self-closing tag. And it's going to have a style. Now this style is somewhat complex, so we're going to do the same thing we did for the get answer row styles. This time we're going to say get overlay styles. We won't pass it any arguments yet. We'll just go ahead and start working on this. So you can say const get overlay styles. And again, we'll set up a new array, const s. We'll return that array. And by default, it's going to have the styles.answer bar. And basically, if the question has been answered, then we'll go ahead and say s.push a width of 100. So where do we get this answered? Well, we're going to make that an argument to this function. And we're actually going to have a few different arguments. We're going to have the is correct answer, was user answer, and then finally we'll have that answered. So using these three variables is how we're actually going to decide which color bar should be displayed. 
So first off, we can say if it was the user's correct answer, or if it is the correct answer, then we know it's always going to be green regardless. So we can say s.push styles.answer bar correct. Else if it was the user answer, and since it wasn't the correct answer, we know it was a wrong answer, it was the user's answer, therefore it should be the red. So we can say s.push styles.answer bar wrong. And then finally, if neither of those are true, then we can just say it's s.push styles.answer bar neutral. So we need to actually add these uh, properties to our get overlay styles function call. So here we can say, first off, was the answer correct? And that's going to come from this.props.is correct answer. Then we want was user answer, which is going to be this.props dot was user answer and then finally we want to determine if the question has been answered so we can say this dot props dot answered now up here we're just setting a width right now we'll decide what the correct width is in the next video depending on how wide the actual answer bar is and how many of those correct answers it's gotten so now when i tap an answer nothing is actually showing up so let's go through and actually kind of do a little bit of debugging here and I figured it out, or hopefully there. Uh, so in get overlay styles, we just return, we never actually return our array of styles. And now we've got a warning that we've got a color set. For view, color isn't valid, it should be background color. So inside of my answer bar, correct, go ahead and change these to be background color because that's what they are. Okay, let's try this again, press an answer. And you can see we're getting the correct thing. If I go through and choose a correct answer, we can see we don't have any of those red bars because our answer was the correct answer, but we're still getting information about the other ones. So if you've got any questions, the link for the code in this video and links to all the previous videos and the next videos are down there as well. Be sure to look at those and review the code for this lesson if you've got any questions. And I'll see you in the next video.